The reason we don't include overclocking in our CPU reviews is because I generally suck at overclocking. And uh, if you're watching this video, you probably do too, so let's change that. Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. So, a real quick disclaimer, overclocking can cause blue screens killing your actual chip, uh, reducing the lifespan, uh, you know, wrecking your CPU cooler if you go way too hot, um, you can wreck your motherboards, you can wreck your power supply, you could possibly even wreck your graphics card. So, be careful when you are overclocking and make sure that you, you know, do a bit more research than just watching this video because, while it is hopefully going to give you everything you need to know, you may as well watch a few others before you actually dive into it, just in case. So. Basically, Skylake turns out to be the easiest uh, chip to over or set of chips to overclock, which is really awesome. All you need to do to start off is just go to the OC uh, area in your motherboard. I'm using a, a, an MSI Gaming M7 motherboard, which has an OC tab. But basically, the first thing you're going to want to do is change the CPU ratio. Now, on the i7 6700K, which is what we're using, um, it's basically just changing the CPU ratio from 40. Uh, I chose to 46 to start with and as you can see I left the core voltage on auto just because the motherboard does quite a good job of finding the best voltage for it but if you want to do this manually increment it in small steps along with your you know just slowly incrementing the uh, you know co uh, the multiplier so get go to 42 and a slight bump up voltage. Um, at stock mine was at 1.248 volts it's now at 1.392 volts. Um, by the way, just be careful with the voltage you go to. I wouldn't recommend going above 1.4 unless you're just trying to validate an overclock um, to, you know, get a score. And I really wouldn't recommend, you know, going too much above sort of 1.3 for regular use because the higher voltage you go, the more likely you are, likely you are to sort of oh, kind of damage the chip. Now, um, also be careful of the sort of temperature. For, for me, I couldn't get it to go above about 4.8 gigahertz um, with, you know, a suitable voltage and, and stuff like that uh, before it just became unstable. And it actually seemed to be the sort of thermal limit of the chip and the Cooler Master Neptun 120XL cooling unit that I was using anyway. So, for me, that's okay. Now, I thought I'd do some benchmarks to see what the difference is between an overclock chip and a non overclock chip, and it's pretty cool actually. So on 3 d Mark uh, 8 you're looking at uh, so non-OC using an R9280 uh, and uh, 8 gigs of RAM you're looking at uh, 6480 whereas an overclock chip you'll get 6567. It seems basically like it's free performance and I'm actually really surprised at the Cinebench score which is very much a you know CPU task when you're obviously running the, the CPU benchmark and uh, I was actually really surpri surprised with the results of this. At stock at 4 gigahertz, we were reaching around about 881 Cinebench points. That's not too bad, but on our overclocked one, we were seeing 1,022 points, which is almost 200 points higher, which is pretty incredible. In fact, that's actually way higher than the difference of the i7-4770K versus the 6700K, so that's pretty awesome too. We also use ASUS RealBench to both stress test the CPU to make sure the overclocks were working. I recommend doing this before doing any benchmarks, and uh, unless you just want to get the benchmark results and hope that they don't crash. But um, yeah, I recommend using this uh, and possibly ADA64 if you want to use the free trial. And uh, yeah, you can also benchmark with this, and as you can see, the overall system score went from 81,000 to 96,000, which is pretty incredible. We also use NovaBench, which is a more sort of overall um, test, but we did get a small amount of improvement there too. So as I said, if you are looking to overclock uh, and make a stable regular overclock to use constantly, I recommend not going over about 1.3, maybe 1.35 volts um, on the, the main V-Core. And uh, yeah, obviously as I said, this is a very beginner's video, so if you want to go into changing the ring voltage, which is basically the voltage, that uh, the uh, speed, sorry, that controls uh, all the other peripherals um, and stuff like that, if you do want to try and change that, then, you know, check out some more detailed overclocking guides. Uh, but yeah, basically thanks for watching. If you've learned anything from this, do let us know in the comments down below and hit that like button. If you want to see more for beginners by beginners videos, as I said, leave a like. Let us know in the comments down below what you'd like to see for beginners by beginners 
Wanderers. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some of our merch in techteamgb.co.uk slash merch are on the screen hopefully now. And uh, yeah, um, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Check out some of our other videos. Obviously it helps us a lot if you want to check out our Amazon links as well. So if you want to buy any PC components, water, nappies, or any of the other strange things, including sex toys that people have bought um, on Amazon, uh, then you can do that and that would help us out. So thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video. This is what it feels like to overclock. It's magic and it's free and it's awesome.